We are live, everybody. We are live today. Hope everybody is having a lovely Friday afternoon. It is 1.41 here in the great state of Texas. I have my one of, in my opinion, one of the best inventions. Um, and I know they just released one of the newer, bigger cups, but this is my Ember. So if I can get that to focus without the light. This is my Ember uh, heated mug, if you will, controlled by an app on my phone. Yes, this is a smart mug. Keeps the temperature at the exact precise temperature that I want it to be, which for my coffee is 122 degrees. So if you hear me drinking some coffee or reaching for it, it will be directly from that little bad boy right there. So <clears throat> I wanted to go on live today and kind of discuss and give my thoughts. Um, if the title didn't give it away, Leica introduced the all new Leica Q uh, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. And it's a camera that for myself has been on my radar. It is a camera that I have always wanted to to uh, to purchase, not necessarily a Leica Q, but just a Leica in general. Uh, but for those of you photographers out there, individuals who are uh, understanding of Leica, they're built in Germany. They are a tank of a camera. One of the main reasons why I like my Fujifilm X-Pro2, which is over there in the corner, is its similarities of a range style finder camera. <clears throat> it's built amazingly well, built like a tank. As a matter of fact, let me grab that. So it is built like a tank. It is very rangefinder-esque. Great, great build. It is super like sturdy. When you put it in your hands, it feels amazing. So in, in my photography world, this was going to be pretty much the closest I could get to a Leica without splurging on the money to purchase one. So typically Leicas will run you, if you buy them brand new and depending on the style, if you do buy a 35 millimeter film camera because they still have those or a digital camera, <clears throat> there's different versions of it. Um, and if you pull up B&H, which we will pull up right now, B&H photo, and just look up a Leica camera, Let's look up the Leica M10. The Leica M10 is one of the one of their better cameras. M10. If you pull up the Leica M10, on average, BNH has it sixty five ninety five. So after taxes, be about seven thousand dollars. That's body only. Does not include lenses. None of that. Body only. So if you're not a former Leica. Uh, film or uh, digital photographer, then of course you're gonna have to go into this uh, particular system fresh. So a brand new 6595, let's round that off to 6600. Then you start looking at lenses. So as you're on B&H's website, <clears throat> you'll see some of the more popular lenses and they have a little recommended section. So the Leica Sumacraut 50 millimeter F2.4 lens runs you 1795. So let's just round that up to 1800, so 66, plus 18, almost $10,000, 9,000 some change, and then after taxes and whatnot. So you're gonna average about 10 grand for one camera, one body, and one lens. A lot of times people who shoot range style primarily shoot primes, <clears throat> which is why a lot of times they'll go with like a 55 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, and again, these are full frame camera bodies. The ding, if you will, I don't find it a problem, but some people find it that the Fujifilm uh, X Pro 2 series, since it's a, excuse me, since it's a crop censored camera, it's not a full frame. People feel like you're getting a lesser of a camera or you're not able to provide any type of uh, professional work. That is never, ever the case for that particular camera. I've shot numerous, numerous professional gigs and have never, ever, ever had a problem with that camera. <clears throat> but with all that being said, Leica in, in and of themselves are a very expensive product line. So going back to what we originally were going to talk about, and that is the Leica Q. Leica released the Leica Q a few years back. It was something that was really on my radar because of its affordability, if you will. Now, it's still a very expensive camera coming in at about $5,000 brand new. Used, you can get it for probably three-fourths price, maybe about $3,000. But one thing about Leicas is that they do not really lose their resale value. Even some of the older film cameras can still almost run you $1,000, which is expensive, if you're just trying to shoot 35 millimeter film. <clears throat> and we'll have videos on 35 millimeter film here in the next coming weeks as we talk about what cameras to use for that and kind of some starter cameras. But 
going back to what we we're talking about, the Leica Q was a great camera because it was affordable, if you will, as a brand new Leica camera, the Leica Q. It is a full frame camera. Uh, it did have an amazing, amazing lens on it. It was a 27 millimeter, uh, or I'm sorry, a 28 millimeter uh, Sum Summa Lux F1.7 fixed lens. And it did have image or optical stabilization. Uh, had a great, great build, great body on it, uh, full out of magnesium alloy body. So it was a tank. It was a tank of a camera. Recently, Leica just came up. Dropped a like for you. Thank you very much, your friendly Otaku. Thank you so much uh, for giving me a drop and a like. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. It very much helps out the live streams in the channel. So I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Um, so when the Leica Q dropped, it was an amazing camera. A lot of people purchased it as a street performer. The only thing that a lot of people were kind of hesitant was because of the fact that it was a fixed lens. You could not interchangeably change out the lenses. As a street photographer myself, that didn't really have a huge problem in my book, simply because when I put on a lens on the Fujifilm X Pro 2, or even when I was shooting a lot of times with the X100 line series, whether it be the original, the S, the F, the T, and so forth, you really didn't need to have the, or you never really had the feeling that you had to swap out the lenses. Swapping out lenses was more if you were maybe, let's say, shooting a birthday party or a wedding. And even then, sometimes you would have two separate bodies. I know back when I would shoot weddings full time, I had two separate camera bodies. I had one with my workhorse, my 24 to 70 uh, L series lens for Canon, since I primarily shot Canon. And then on my other body, I had the 70 to 200. So I didn't have to swap out lenses. I would just go from this side to this side. So I had two cameras sling across me so that way I can capture those images. <clears throat> so having a fixed lens didn't really bother me that much. Um, and it was something that I was super, super excited to see from Leica because they were giving you a, again, quote unquote, not reasonably priced, but an affordably priced camera based on what they normally charge for their cameras. Again, you have to take this with a grain of salt. And if you do not understand Leica, understand that five grand for a camera from them of this uh, quality is awesome from Leica, okay? Now you can get an X-Pro2 with almost the entire uh, Prime system. And if I'm not mistaken, you could probably get it if you get the F2 weather sealed body uh, or the weather sealed lenses from Fuji. You can get the 50, the 35, and the 23, plus an X-Pro2 body, all well under five grand. Brand new. But again, we're talking about Leica here. So Leica now released the brand new Leica Q2, version two, level two, uh, whatever you want to call it. It's the second one. It's Q2. And so what I did was I stumbled upon a few websites, kind of doing some research, and I really, really came across a great one that I think uh, kind of embodies what the differences and the, the the main differences, if you will, of these two cameras. Um, and it's courtesy of mirrorlesscomparison.com. I'm going to drop that link once this video goes live. I'm going to drop that link down below so you can kind of take a look at what we're talking about here. <clears throat> talking about that the Leica Q is one of the brand's most popular cameras to date because it is, because again, it's affordable. Um what they did is they kind of looked at what they have in common and then more importantly, what they don't have in common, uh, similarities and differences, if you will. So the first thing we're going to look at is what they have in common. Again, they both have the 28 millimeter F 1.7 Summa, Summa Lux lens with optical stabilization. They have a three inch LCD panel with 1.04 million dots, and they both are made out of a magnesium alloy body. Very, 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 very well made. Okay. So going into the sensor and processor of the cameras. So the new full frame CMOS sensor on the Q2 features almost double the resolution of the original. The original camera was only a 24.2 megapixel camera, which coincidentally was almost identical to this. It wasn't the same sensor, but the same megapixel as the X-Pro2. The new Leica Q2 has a sensor of 43.3 megapixels. So that's almost double, as, as I mentioned. And that is coupled with an updated Maestro 2 processor, which allows a wider sensitivity range of ISO from 50 to 50,000, okay? And a smooth color and tonal rendering. <clears throat> the base ISO of the original Q is a stop slower at 100, but the top ISO is still the same. So that's good to know that even though they have a much larger sensor, the ISO is still the same other than the, at the bottom end, the Leica Q2 has one stop difference of 50 ISO versus the Q1 having 100. 
So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, will this change the resolution and the quality of the images? It's going to depend on your shooting situation and your shooting style. A lot of times, higher megapixels does not always mean a clearer image. Always remember that, okay? A lot of times, people take for granted that I need a much higher megapixel camera to get a clearer shot. And that's not necessarily always the case. Sometimes a higher ISO will increase your uh, availability or your ability to capture images in low light, but you can introduce also more grain into the image. So it's gonna depend on how the new sensor, the Maestro 2 processor allows for these images to be processed inside the camera. Because again, higher uh, megapixels does not always mean you get a clearer image. Ask some of the Nikon D, what was it, the D810 or the D800 that was like 40, 50, 60, 80 megapixels, I forget, but it was a high, high megapixel, uh, rating beautiful camera for landscapes does amazing shots but sometimes at night depending on again on what you shoot and primarily shoot at night it could introduce some more grain and some more noise so keep that in mind okay now one thing with Leica that they've always been incredibly amazing at is color rendering their color rendering just from their lens and their overall processing had you can tell when there's a Leica image put forth next to another image one of the reasons why I went with Fuji is shooting film. You could definitely, definitely see the great colors. Fuji is heavily highlighted in greens, uh, blues, things like that. Leica overall has amazing, amazing color rendering. So that's something to think about too when you're looking to potentially look at purchasing one of these cameras, whether it be the Q1 or the Q2. And we'll talk a little bit more of that here in a bit. So the uh, article also goes on to say that the stills can still be recorded in 14-bit DNG files. Okay, so that's something to think about as well. Um, let's see. Now, one thing to think about also is the uh, electric viewfinder. So that's something to think about as well. Both cameras feature a high resolution 3.68 megapixel viewfinder, but the Q2, the newest one, has an updated OLED panel instead of an LCOS uh, panel. So with the latter, the resolution is divided between three RGB colors, 1228K dots per color. So essentially the newer camera has a much clearer uh, viewfinder. It has, a, it has the same megapixels uh, on paper, but the OLED display is gonna make for things to be a lot more crisp and clear and have a little bit less blur as you're moving through, especially if you like to compose your shots and kind of move like that. It'll be a little bit uh, more clear for you on that end. So again, what they go on to say is that thanks to the higher refresh rate of the Q2, there's hardly any lag in the updated eye sensor. So that's good. Again, especially if you use the eye to kind of compose your shot and move things around, it's better to have no lag so that way it doesn't kind of move forward and skip through. Now, one of the other things that people have talked about uh, with the former Leica is battery life, okay? So the smaller battery, good news for those of you who maybe potentially own the first Leica and are thinking about maybe going to the new Leica. The one that's uh, that was previously released, the Leica Q1, had a smaller battery, okay? It had the BP-DC 12 lithium battery. So that's been replaced with the new BP-SCL4 battery on the Q2. It's the same size, if you will, but it's the same battery that was in the Leica SL which should give you about 30% more battery power than the first Leica Q. The first Q could give you about 250 shots before the battery ran out, which isn't a whole, whole lot, I'll grant you that. But again, you're thinking uh, full frame with a fixed lens on it, amazing high quality. And now introducing the fact that it's got a bigger sensor, the fact that they were introducing a bigger battery, which would give you a little bit more images is pretty awesome. So with the new battery, you can get off about 370 shots before it runs out, okay? Now, interestingly, what they bring up is that the Q2 provides separate doors for the battery and the memory card, whereas the Q had one door. So a lot of times, you'll, you'll know that when you open the battery on some cameras, the camera slot is kind of hidden down below the battery. Uh, as in this case of my Sony RX100 at the bottom, when you open up and pop out the battery, there's also the little memory card. With the Fujis, and now with the Leicas, which is again why I always like to compare it to the Fuji, the Fuji has the card slot on the side and the battery compartment on the bottom. Now the Leica Q2 is going that route as well. 
card slots on one side, battery slot on the other. So if that's something that bothered you, that's something to think about, especially how you set yours up. If you put a bottom plate, if you put an L bracket, however you're gonna set up your camera, that's something to think about. So keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> one of the newer things that I did read up on that the Q and the Q2 differ in is digital zoom. Both cameras come with the ability to do digital zoom crops. And this is gonna be important for you guys, especially because now with the higher megapixel rate of the new Q2. On the Q, the first one, you can only choose between options of 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter, okay? Whereas in the Q2, because of its additional megapixel uh, count, you'll be able to now get up to 75 millimeters. So you're gonna have all three options. You're gonna have 35, because remember it shoots at 28. So you'll have the 28 millimeter lens itself. You'll have the 35 millimeter crop, the 50 millimeter crop, and now the 75 millimeter crop. Now this will result in different megapixel images, okay? So, and this is where you gotta think about it, but is it is it gonna be one of those things where you're happy to get the shot, but lose megapixels, or you don't wanna lose megapixels and you wanna maybe crop in post, which again, you're still losing megapixels at that point, but it's something to think about. So a 30 megapixel image is given to you if you shoot at 35 millimeter. If you shoot at a uh, 50 millimeter crop, you're now lowering it down to a 15 megapixel image, still usable, very, very, very usable. If you crop down to uh, 75 millimeters on the new Leica Q2, you are now going to be given with a 6.6 .6 megapixel image. Now that is something to think about because yes, you do get the, the more ability to crop in tighter, but you're sacrificing megapixels. You're taking the original 40 plus megapixel image from the 28 millimeter lens and condensing it to a 6.6 .6 megapixel uh, image. So that's something to think about if this is a camera that is interesting to you because of that. You are gonna be losing megapixels on the cropped end if you decide to go with this camera. Oh, can you guys see the, the heat rising off that thing? I think it's amazing. Love this. <clears throat> We're almost 20 minutes in, still at the perfect temperature. Autofocus uh, and burst shooting. Both of them were not the absolute greatest. Obviously, you're not going to shoot a lot of fast-moving sports and things like that with a rangefinder-style camera. Um, but what Leica has said is that in its class, now keep those words in mind, in its class of camera, the Leica Q2 from Leica, they're saying that it has the fastest autofocus in its class and can lock onto a subject in 0 0.15 seconds. The speed for the original camera was never disclosed. Okay, so they never really talked about how fast, but with the new one, they're saying 0 0.15 seconds, so almost instantaneously, okay? Now, both cameras use the contrast detection AF system. The Q, the original, worked with a total of 49 areas, whereas the Q2 bumps up all the way to 225 areas on the sensor. Now, both cameras can sustain burst speeds of up to 10 frames per second with their mechanical shutter speed, uh, the mechanical shutter, uh, with locked focus. However, the new Q2 can manage 200, I'm sorry, not 200, 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter with the focus locked. Okay, so keep that in mind. You're getting a lot more frames per second. Yes, like I said, you really won't be shooting sports and things like that, but you do have the option now with the high, high. 10 frames per second was already kind of high. 20 frames per second with an electronic shutter speed, keep that in mind should get you done or should get the job done. But again, it's how it's entirely how you shoot and how you photograph your, your particular jobs. Shutter speeds, um, of course, thanks to the new sensor readout on the Q2, the Q2 now speeds are fast at 1 40,000th of a second with the electronic shutter speed. That's up from 1 16,000th of a second on the original Q. However, with the mechanical shutter speed, the Q2 can now go as slow as 60 seconds as opposed to 30 seconds on the previous model Q1. And again, if you're using flash, which some people use with their range finders, the flash, the flash sync speed on both of the cameras has not changed. It's one 500th of a second. So keep that in mind. Now here's a big one that I'm going to enjoy if I do end up purchasing this camera, which won't be for a while. Um, but one of the things that I do like about Fuji and I know I keep coming back to Fuji and harping on Fuji. I am not sponsored by them in any way. I really wish I was. Fuji, if you're watching these and listening to this, send me over some gear. I would greatly, greatly appreciate reviewing this stuff because I am a major, major, massive fan of Fuji gear. I have the Fuji X-Pro2. 
I have the X-T3 back there, and I've gone through the X-T1, the X-T2, and now have the 3. I didn't own the X-Pro1, but I do have the X-Pro2, and this is probably by far my most favorite camera of all time. Um, and then I've been a fan since the very first. I've been a fanboy since the very first X100. Then I went and moved on. The only one that I haven't purchased fully for myself is the latest one right now, the F. It's the only one that I don't own. Um, but all the other cameras, I absolutely love Fuji's uh, just overall customer service, uh, their updates, how they can make a camera feel almost like a brand new camera with just a firmware update. <clears throat> so back to why what I'm about to bring up is going to be interesting for me myself. Video. Now with the X Pro 2, I never really considered it a video type of uh, device. Can you capture video? Yes. Before the update uh, for the Fuji X Pro 2 back uh, late last year, the highest you can get was 1080p, 60 frames per second, if I'm not mistaken. Shows to goes to show how much I really filmed on this. I rarely filmed on it. Now, with an update, you can shoot 4K, 30 frames per second with this bad boy. So, <clears throat> with that being said, the original Leica Q was only able to film in full HD, 1080p, at up to 60 frames per second. Is that amazing? No. Do you want more? A lot of times, uh, you know, people are saying, with well, 60 frames per second, 1080p, I can film some pretty decent things, but for the amount of money that I'm paying, I would like a little bit more camera for my dollar. But you have to understand, you do not really buy a Leica for video, hands down. If you want something more of a hybrid video uh, photography camera, then you go with the Fuji, you go with the Sony, you go with Canon who introduced it all with the 5D Mark II. Even Nikon has beefed up um, their video offerings, but you do not buy a Leica for video. You just don't. Okay. However, with the new uh, XQ2 or the XQ2, I'm sorry, the Leica Q2, you can now shoot in 4K format, which is three, uh, 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second. Now myself, I shoot a lot of 24 frames a second. I like that cinematic look. I don't do a lot of slow motion shots, uh, things like that, but if I needed that, I have my Sony camera that can shoot up to a god crazy number of like 960 frames a second, something like that. I have my X-T3, which can shoot at 4K, um, you know, high frames per second. So I don't really uh, need, per se, a camera that does both. Plus, like I said, I primarily shoot in 24 frames per second. So the fact that this camera can shoot in 4K at 30 or 24 frames per second, and it can also shoot in cinema 4K, which is 4096 by 2160, so a little bit more because of its high uh, megapixel sensor, it can shoot at cinema 4K, but only at 24 frames per second. However, it can also, in full HD, because I had mentioned 1080p yet, so in 1080p, it can shoot in either 60 or 120 FPS if you want that slow motion. So Leica recognizes that uh, there is a need to kind of be, be almost like a hybrid style camera. However, again, don't expect, you know, can you film with everything? Obviously you can. The best film camera is the camera that you have with you at all times. That's the absolute best camera you can have is the one that you can take with you at all times, have it be portable and have it produce images the way you want. Because again, filming is based off of kind of like how you're going to structure and set up your shot. It really only matters the megapixel and things like that if you're shooting uh, for production work, if you're filming for high major motion pictures, which even then will shoot occasionally with small B-roll cameras, the Osmo Pocket, the Sony RX100s, the old school Canon HV30 camcorders or great B-roll cameras. Cameras like this will get certain shots. So again, Video is awesome. The specs on this thing are amazing. But again, Leica is primarily known as a photography camera first and a video second. Fuji kind of started off on that route, but they're recognizing it with the advancement of the X-H1 that came out and then the X-T3 that you can do both with one camera. So that's something to think about. The Leica does come with some pretty amazing specs, but again, it's going to be dependent on what we see as some uh, results come out, some sample footage comes out. If I find any after the end of this live, I'll post them down below so you can see um, some specifics in the live video uh, category because, you know, it is going to be something that people are going to want to bring up. How does this thing shoot video? I know it can shoot amazing pictures, but if I want to capture some video of my family, things like that, is the footage that I get going to be usable? Okay. 
Um, the controls and designs are almost the same as far as like what's on the right and what's on the left. But the Q2 does offer different uh, buttons on the left-hand side versus on the right. Now, what it doesn't give you is a joystick wheel, which sometimes I miss uh, having it on the X Pro 2 in the middle. Now, it does have one up at the top, which is cool. I'm glad they at least gave me a joystick. But sometimes the joysticks in the middle are what a lot of people use. The Q2 does not offer that. Um, there are a few things like the power button is no longer the drive mode selector, which is cool. A lot of times people were messing with that and sometimes turning the camera off, things like that. Um, the video button has disappeared from the top plate of the camera. And there's three buttons on the left-hand side rather than the five. So my mistake, the Leica Q1 had five buttons. Now the Leica Q2 has only three buttons. So a little bit sleeker, a little bit slimmer, a little bit uh, more discreet as far as the buttons on the cameras are concerned. Now still on the back, there it is in white bold letters, Leica Camera German, uh, Welter Germany. So it tells you exactly where the camera's at. And you'll know a lot of people when they see Leica, especially for that red dot with Leica, you'll know that that individual is particularly shooting with the Leica. But the button uh, movement kind of makes it look a little bit more sleeker. It doesn't give you the the, the a massive amounts of buttons that like it used to have before. Um, it's basically just your shutter speed, your picture, your on and off, and your your shutter button. Um, in real in reality, there's really nothing. And then of course, your your hot shoe at the top. Uh, other than but other than that, the buttons have been moved either in uh, menu systems or uh, towards the back. Weather sealing. The, few, the the this is a big one. The original Q didn't offer any type of weather sealing, which is a big one for street photographers because the last thing you want to do is get caught in the rain and not capture images. Some of the better images that I've captured have been in uh, not sunny conditions, whether it be cloudy, uh, rainy, uh, snowing, things like that. The rare few times it does snow in Texas, having a weather sealed camera is amazing because it can help you give you that peace of mind that I can still capture these images without feeling like I'm wasting and, and damaging my gear, especially if you're buying something from Leica, because again, Leica is incredibly expensive. So the Q2 is now weather sealed in, 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 in a sense. So it does come with dust and moisture resistance to an IP52 standard. And what the article says is all this means is that it could stand up to a light rain shower, but shouldn't be fully submersed in water. Hey, Lee Fitness, how are you doing, my friend? How is everybody doing right now? We're catching up on the tail end of this uh, video review of the Leica, but I'm glad you came in. Anybody else in here, if you guys can give a like on the like stream, share this out. We're going to be here for a couple more minutes, but again, thank you guys for going uh, or coming to buy here live. Hope everybody is doing well. <sighs> Join me another cup of coffee. <clears throat> so again, going back to the original Leica, it wasn't weather sealed which was a problem spending five grand on a camera not having it weather sealed. This one, although it's not fully submissive or submersive in water, you could still, in a shower, still be able to capture some great images because it is uh, uh, resistant up to a light rain, uh, a light rain shower and dust. So that's something to think about as well. And Bluetooth connectivity. That's a big one. I do like that ability on the Fuji uh, cameras. Utilizing their app to download some of the images is awesome, especially if you uh, have a social media following or if you post to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and so forth. Being able to get your images straight from your camera and edit on your favorite uh, photo app. Excuse me. I'm trying to reach 1,000 followers, but I keep losing. Myself included, man. Um, I've gone back and forth. I, it took me almost two weeks to finally crack 1,200 um, I was at 1192, 93. I'd get to like 1198 and then drop to 1180 something. And then I'd get to 1193 and then back to 11, almost 79, 80. So you go back and forth. The key is just to keep grinding, keep grinding away, make videos, go live, spread uh, positivity through your channel, and it'll come. It'll come. Uh, feel free uh, to check out everybody's channel who's here in the chat. Support yourselves. Ask. Uh, ask about their videos, how they did things, go to their channels. Um, the only thing that I ask is that you don't just say, support me, support me, support me, sub to me right now, right now, right now, because that's not real support. All you're really looking at is a number, and a number does not mean anything in YouTube without the uh, without having them come back, 
without making them part of your everyday channel, having 10,000 subscribers that only watch your video twice really means nothing. Okay. And then that's, this is my personal opinion. So again, this is just one guy's small, small little corner on YouTube saying this, and this is my opinion. But again, you can have 20,000 followers on YouTube and supporters, subscribers, whatever you want to call it. But if your videos average 20 views, 10 views, it means absolutely nothing when it comes to that. So keep that in mind. That's something that I struggled with at the beginning, but I've come to terms and realization that, that I do this for myself and to spread positivity and to spread education. And if people want to watch it, awesome. If they don't, there's 50 trillion other channels out there. I'm sure somebody out there will engage them better than I can. But again, that's just one guy's super, super small, humble opinion in his very small corner of the internet. <clears throat> so I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> so Bluetooth connectivity. The first Q came in with Wi-Fi and NFC. The Q2 replaces NFC with Bluetooth connectivity. Okay. So you can use it to maintain a constant connection with Leica's photos app on your smart device. So they have an app that will allow you to kind of stay connected to your camera, um, download the images and so forth. So that's something to think about as well. So the final difference, and is it worth considering the price? This is where it's gonna be dependent on what your needs are. Everything that we've talked about now, is that something that you're interested in going for? Or is it something that you think maybe you're not even in a like a, uh, camera system right now, and you're looking to potentially start shooting with a Leica camera. <clears throat> Again, kind of recapping, the Leica Q2 was just announced um, this week, and I'm kind of giving you my thoughts and comparisons versus the Leica Q first edition, which came out, I believe, three or four years ago. So it's something to think about. The original Q was already pricey. It was four grand, okay? $4,000 for a camera that did not have a detachable lens. It was a fixed 28 millimeter Summicron lens, Summilux lens, 28 millimeter F1.7. So that has amazing, amazing bokeh in images, correct? <clears throat> but still expensive, four grand. The new Q2 is going to take an additional $1,000 from your pocket. Okay, so the Q2 is up to $49.95. So basically five grand. The original was four. I hate how cameras do that whole like five dollars less to make it feel like it's three. It's four thousand dollars. Thirty nine ninety five is not a three thousand dollar camera. That's a four thousand dollar camera. Saying that a camera is forty nine ninety five is not a four thousand dollar camera. That's a five thousand dollar camera. The Q two is going to cost you five grand after taxes and even if you add a service and things like that warranty, which I don't recommend because Leica has one. But still, five grand. The biggest biggest reason why somebody would buy the Q2 over the Q1, other than the weather seal and all that, is going to be the megapixels. The huge, huge, almost practically doubling megapixels is going to be huge for some people, which is why that extra $1,000 seems insignificant to those who use a system like that, okay? Now, one of the other things that people might look at is the video capabilities and the video quality, okay? Q1, full HD. 1080p at 60 frames a second. Q2 can not only do 4K, but Cinema 4K, as well as Full HD 1080p at 60 and 120 frames per second. So they're adding additional video capabilities on this new camera with a higher megapixel sensor. So keep those two things in mind because for video, occasionally a higher megapixel sensor, especially if you're able to take full read of that sensor, can allow you to crop down when you're filming, which works amazingly if you're looking to crop down and you're shooting wide and you zoom in in post to crop and still have it look amazingly cinematic, that is gonna be a huge, huge deal for individuals potentially using this for video, okay? Other than that, the improved EVF is something to think about, the burst, if you will. So the Leica Q2 was already a great camera, this one took it up a notch, adding these little features that on paper may not seem significant, but in the long run, it's definitely, definitely, definitely going to be worth it to you if those uh, upgrades matter, okay? Video, higher megapixel, EVF capabilities, and so forth. So it's something to think about. Would I be looking at the XQ1 versus the XQ2? I'm letting you know, guys, the XQ2 is where I'm going to want to be. I'm not sure how fast I'll be able to get there. The goal is potentially maybe by the end of the year. Who knows? Maybe around the holidays 
Leica will do something that they've really never done before, and that's decrease the price of their cameras or throw in things, maybe a bag, maybe a flash, something, who knows, uh, an, a viewfinder on top. Sometimes they'll, they'll make these viewfinders that go up top on here sometimes, but with this one already having it, you know, <clears throat> who knows what they might do. But to kind of give you my overall thoughts, I'm thinking the Q2 is where I want to land, um, especially with the video capabilities uh, and the higher megapixels. I primarily, I don't really shoot weddings anymore, photograph weddings and things like that. I primarily shoot street photography and landscapes. Um, the family and I like to take trips throughout the state, stop during springtime. It's already happening. The flowers are coming out, the blue bonnets, the paint brushes, all the different, the daisies, dandelions, all of that. Those are starting to come out in full bloom. And in Texas, we have some of the greatest landscapes, in my opinion. Of course, I'm from Texas, born and raised. So, of course, I'm going to be biased towards my state. But with that being said, and primarily, again, what I photograph, I think I'm going to be looking at the XQ2. Yes, it's $1,000 more. Yes, it's an expensive camera. But for me, always wanting to shoot Leica. The only Leica that I've ever photographed with was a film camera long, long, long time ago, back in high school. Um Somebody had a like a film camera and I would shoot, uh, I would photograph with it. Awesome, awesome results on a film camera. Um, and for me to jump into the digital portion of Leica without spending 10 plus thousand dollars, <clears throat> even though it's a fixed lens, even though I won't be able to swap it out, I'll have the, the crop capabilities, which again, I primarily may not use, but again, at least I have it. Um, I would probably no, go no further than maybe the 50 millimeter because that gives me still a decent uh, image at 16 megapixels or so. So at least that gives me a little bit of leeway with that. But primarily shooting with full frame, 28 megapixels, I'm sorry, 28 millimeters is a great wide shot from a street photographer's perspective. And for myself, primarily shooting that, for me, that's going to be amazing uh, as a street performer. And again, landscaping, it's going to give me a decently wide landscape shot. And if I need anything wider, I've always got my X-T3 with the 10 to uh, to 22 millimeter lens. <clears throat> so I'm going to have a wide range of capabilities for that. So my thoughts are, if the new features don't matter to you, so video doesn't matter because you've already got a, a ridiculously awesome video rig, or you don't really do video, you're more of a photo person, then the Leica Q1, I can almost guarantee you here in the next uh, coming weeks or months will definitely, because the Q2 doesn't come out until April. Um, let me see if B&H has the, the particular, let's see, Q2. It's not in April, if I'm not mistaken. It just says pre-order, and it says new item coming soon. Let's see. I did see, though, guys, right now when I typed it in, that there are going to be some, some different accessories for it. Hello to everybody who's new in the chat. If you are here and new, thank you for showing up uh, to my little corner of the world in the uh, YouTube live realm. If you're new to the channel and like uh, concepts and thoughts on photography, cinema, good stuff, all of that, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Give me a like. Give me a thumbs up. That really does help out the channel. Share this stream out if you don't mind. It really helps the channel out as well. I don't know what is going on with my internet, but it is not playing well with me. Let me see. Let's go to BH Photo. Let's look up like a cute. But again, guys, if you are new and you weren't able to listen earlier, we were comparing the differences between the Leica Q2 camera that was just announced this week and then the Leica Q1, which was announced roughly about four years ago, three, four years ago. Um, Going over price, uh, it's going to be an expensive camera. It's going to be even more expensive than the uh, than the original Q. But some of the things that they offer, some of the things that this camera offers, uh, are going to be worth taking a look at. So, so let's see. It doesn't say specifically when it's looking to be released. The video capabilities again is going to be killer for this camera. 
So some of the accessories that it looks guys like what they're having with the Leica is looks like they're going to have a thumb support. And again, you got to keep in mind we are talking about Leica, okay? So let's let's get that out of the way right now. We are talking about Leica cameras. So when we look at some of the prices here, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be shocked at how much some of these things cost, but but again, we're talking Leica here. So Leica is a very unique camera uh, distributor and camera corporation. So I'm going to paste in the link uh, from BNH. Now again, this is not, uh, I'm not affiliated with them. This is not an affiliate link. I'm not sponsored by them in any way, but there is the link from BNH photo directly to the camera. And then there's quite a few accessories. If you go to the, if you go to the, uh, Search of that, that particular search will take you to all the Q, the Leica Q2 uh, accessories that are going to be out. So something like I mentioned, there's a thumb support, doesn't give a picture of it, but that will be coming out $225. There's a hand grip that's coming out also. That's going to be $125. Highly recommend the Leica side grip and thumb grip for the Q. So did you own the, the original Q? That was something that I really, really wanted to get, but it just was never in my deck of cards. I was never able to get it, but with this one, I'm kind of going full full throttle, if you will, to try and get the Leica Q2. Um, just because of the added video, um, the stabilization and things like that, uh, the weather sealing, that kind of got me the first one, which is why I like shooting with the Fujis. But um, I think the Q2 is where I'm going to land, hopefully, by the end of the year. Highly recommend the side grip. That's good to know. Okay. So kind of getting a side grip. And that was another thing too. I don't have incredibly massive hands, but when you put the Fuji with my hand, I mean, it fits practically. My hand covers it. So grips are where it's at a lot of times for me. I do have a uh, mount plate that's coming that gives a grip for the front of the camera a little bit better feel for me. On the X-T3, I always have to have the battery grip because that helps me grip the camera a little bit better. And for my hands, it's better for that as well. And it looks like, I don't know if it's from Leica, but they're going to be having a thumb grip uh, for the Q. Oh, no, this was for the Q. It doesn't say for the Q2. But there was a thumb grip. Uh, depending on which one you want to go for, Lay, like you mentioned, it, sure I butchered your name, and I apologize for that. Um, 139 bucks. I'm sure there's going to be third party sellers out there, but my only concern with purchasing third party, especially thumb grips, which go into your hot shoe, be very, very careful. You don't shove those things into the hot shoe. Cause the last thing you want to do, I've never done it, but I have had a buddy do it. You can completely damage those connectors in there. And the last thing you want to do is get a thumb grip and you're jamming it and shoving it in there because you want a snug fit and you're jamming the hell out of that thing. And then when you pull it out and you do it over and over and then you go on to put on your flash or your transmitter for your flash and nothing works. And you've just ruined basically your, your hot shoe mount because there's a difference between a hot and a cold shoe mount. So <clears throat> let's see. But I think that is really all I wanted to discuss with you guys. Are there any questions in the chat? Is there anybody wanting to ask questions about anything from uh, what we talked about today, the Leica, um, photography in general? <sighs> Almost done with my cup. <sighs> See if there's any questions that come in. Let me check over here because sometimes the chat is harder to look at while I'm here. Elite Fitness, my friend, I am going to share out your channel later on to kind of help you. Um, as a matter of fact, you know what? We will go now. Let's see. Let's 
See, you're at 859 subscribers. Now, you're averaging some pretty decent views. Um, What I would recommend, Elite Fitness, if you are still in the chat or if you uh, check out this live replay, one thing that I would recommend uh, for you to do is for your uploads uh, on your channel, having it be at the very, very top, what I would do is rename that, uh, that playlist to your name and then upload. So Elite Fitness, just copy it the way it is. And I learned this courtesy of At Pusa Studios which are an amazing, amazing set of content creators. Those people are incredibly, incredibly awesome. And I would highly recommend you guys checking out their channel. But one thing that they recommended to me and I've done it and it's increased my watch time quite a bit is for your uploads uh, playlist that captures all of them, rename it to your channel name space uploads. Don't put anything after that. Don't do anything extra. Don't do anything you know on top of that. Just do... So in my case, Pet Rock Media Uploads, or in your case, Elite Fitness Uploads. Change it and then just have it to where it adds all of your content into that particular uh, playlist, and it should do wonders for your watch time, which again, watch time is king. Subscriber number count is really not as important as watch time, trust me. Watch time is the hardest, hardest thing to increase than subscribers, because people are always gonna flock to you and say, I've subscribed to you, I've subscribed to you, I've subscribed to you, but are they watching? Almost 100% they're not. All they're doing is going there, clicking the button, taking off. But okay, guys, we have been going live for 47 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and stop this live stream here. If there are no other questions in the chat, I greatly, greatly appreciate each and every one of you stopping by and having this conversation with me. Um, like us, definitely a, uh, a particular, uh, unique camera producer, if you will, they are unique in the sense of what they, uh, what they do and do not do in the photography realm. Um, they have been around for God knows how long, a long, long time, and will be here a lot longer after we're all gone, most likely. So they have a very particular niche in the photography field. Um, you pay for it, but from everybody that I've seen, heard, talked about, this is an amazing, amazing camera. And it's something to keep your eye on if you're interested in jumping into the digital realm of Leica, the Leica Q2, or check out the Q1. The Q1 may be just as amazing for you if you're not interested in all the upgrades, megapixels, video, things like that. Then the Q1, for all intents and purposes, is an amazing, amazing camera. And it's going to save you almost half. Cause I can almost guarantee you they're going to drop that number from $39.95 to probably $34. Maybe get some instant rebates on there or something if you purchase through Amazon or B&H. So keep that in mind. Um, but once again, guys, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for stopping by this live. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Check that bell icon as well so you're notified, hopefully notified, each and every time we post a video or go live on this channel. Um, if anything does come up or change from this particular announcement, I will definitely give you my opinion on that. But once again, guys, this is Jose Ortiz with PetRockMedia.com signing out. Peace.